Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands. Where last time, we wrapped up our business with Riley and Sydney, and today, we're doing some vault diving. Because yes indeed, thanks to the vault tech terminal located inside the Citadel, we now know the names and locations of every remaining vault we've not visited in Fallout 3, Vault 106, and Vault 87. In both cases though, yes, there's not that much useful information that might let you know what's going on inside each vault, though you can piece together a bit before you head in. For example, the leading doctor who was running the vault experiment decided that all of the information should be nice and classified, and in particular, yes, he's part of the psychological research department, so that might give you, you know, a bit of a hint as to what you might be walking into. Though, fun fact, Vault 106 has actually got something very unique about it that means some players might have known what was going on in there before they actually made it through the vault door. And that is that Vault 106 is one of a tiny number of vaults where the vault experiment was specified by Black Isle Studios way back in the days of old Fallout, but the actual vault itself was not realised until the days of modern Fallout. The way this happened is, as many of you may be aware, Black Isle Studios did produce a series of lore documents called the Fallout Bible, basically just filling in a whole bunch of gaps in the lore and other assumptions about the Fallout universe that they used to build the stories of Fallout 1 and 2. And in that document, they listed experiments that weren't in Fallout 1 and 2, and one of those made it into Fallout 3. That's what Vault 106 is. So if you happen to be super into the deep lore, and you played Fallout 3 for the first time in 2008, okay, so your eyes probably lit up when you reached Vault 106, because you knew what you were walking into. Though, I won't spoil it, just in case you know, for some people, they've never come across this vault before, and you'd like to see it firsthand. This is the only such vault in Fallout 3, and there's one other in Fallout New Vegas as well, Vault 34. That one I find particularly pleasing, because then yes, you literally had people in Black Hole Studios speculating what other vaults might exist out in the world, and then over a decade later, finally getting to bring it to life in Fallout New Vegas, which is just lovely. I also really enjoy the entry for Vault 87 because, of course, the first time you read this terminal, you're looking for one thing in particular, and that thing is uh, the GAC. But if you actually, you know, very carefully read the rest of the information, yes, it does also give you a bit of a hint as to something else going on there too. In particular, why precisely was this vault fitted out with four stasis chambers? And yes, because we've already been to the Citadel and seen that terminal, that means it's pretty easy for us to find the remaining vault. So yes, that's Arafu, right over there. And I'm standing right here in Kaylin's bed and breakfast. Handful of raiders, but nothing too dramatic, meaning yes, if I just head due south or straight from here, we should find our way to the vault in no time whatsoever. And seriously, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I really hope in Fallout 5, we do go back to a world where yes, we've just got, oh, hang on. Got ourselves. Oh! Okay, here's something I wasn't expecting to see. I've come across a really cool random event. So, um, yes, you may notice we've got ourselves an Amata right here. Yes, this only exists in the world because I decided to blow up the vault and drive all the residents of Vault 101 out into the wasteland, leading to a situation where a Amata can run into the Enclave. So, okay, let's pop a stealth boy and see if I can get, yes, near enough by to overhear the conversation. We need to know where you got that suit. I'm from Vault 101. Please, you've got to help me. Of course. We're always ready to assist American citizens in distress. Can you tell us where your vault is? I've got the location right here on my pit boy Why? Excellent. That's all we need from her. Open fire! <laughs> So at this point, unfortunately, yes, it turns out the Enclave, all they wanted was the information about Vault 101. Even though it has been a little bit blown up, they don't know that, they still want to get access to that. So, um, yes, at this point I'm going to try and save a martyr's life, though that could be a bit on the difficult side, on the very hardest difficulties, given, yes, two lands in power armor, etc, etc. Okay, step one, we should be able to take out the officer nice and easy, so you go down no problem whatsoever. Now what I need is for you guys to turn your attention to me. Please stop shooting a martyr. So I'm kind of hoping, yes, you'll just get out of the way at this point. Now what I want to do ideally is, yes, disarm both of them. Obviously they may pick up their guns again afterwards, but even if they do, the condition will be much, much lower. And this should give Amanta plenty of time to potentially get away. 
gosh darn it. Okay, so Armata is a bit on the dead side. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and save her. Best way to do that is yes, I'm just going to reload her that massively turned down the difficulty so I can finish off those guys before they kill her. Stay away from me. This is all your fault. Tragically, of course, this doesn't actually make a huge amount of sense given, uh, yes, I did successfully lie to Wamata and tell her, hey, actually, it was your dad that blew up the vault. After telling her dad, it was her that blew up the vault. So, um, yes, it doesn't actually make a huge amount of sense that she would hate me, but, okay, Amata's a smart cookie. Maybe she figured it out by herself down the line, but this is the only way you'll ever run into a martyr again after trouble at the home front. If you blow up the reactor, there is a possibility you might run into her right here out in the wasteland, where she makes the very bad decision to trust the Enclave. Also, I did not consider this till right this moment, but um, yes, it is kind of hilarious that by sheer coincidence, the party of Enclave troops desperately trying to find every single vault spawned right here, interrogating a martyr for the location of Vault 101. And they are standing right next to Vault 106, apparently not realising it, which is, ah, oh, well that's just beautiful. So, here we go, Vault 106. Unlike many, yes, it's actually locked up when you arrive at it, so let's just uh, crack that open and kind of uh, assume maybe I was able to do this because I had a pit boy on me, whereas other people would not, who cocking knows. Uh, and in just a moment, we can go and investigate the rather cool stuff that's going on inside. And, uh, okay, it is rather cool inside this vault. It's also a bit on the buggy side. There are various reasons that, yes, this vault is a little bit weird. And one thing to note immediately, yes, rather prominently next to every other vault, there is something being uh, pumped straight into this vault from above. There is clearly some form of air or gas being moved around, and uh, yeah, that's going to be important as time goes by. And rather fun thing about this vault, if you've got amazing science, you can get a pretty good part of the story immediately. Right by the vault door, you've got the security terminal. Just uh, crack that open nice and quickly, lovely. To vault security. If any of our residents notice any unusual odour or faint taste to the air, please assure them that everything is okay. There was a slight irregularity in our filtration system, but nothing to cause alarm. The systems have already been corrected and are 100% functional again. If you notice anyone acting out in a strange manner, please report the disturbance immediately so medical assistance can be sent. So, yes indeed. Just in case you didn't piece it together from the pipes in the first room, something's been pumped into the air. And uh, contrary to what the Overseer is saying, uh, yeah, it was not just a little technical accident. And you may also notice, yes, there's uh, a couple of bad things down here that want to hurt you. So just uh, mosey on down in this direction. Just head into the vault a bit deeper and deeper. And uh, yes, indeed, slight, um, slight complication here, which is one, the world's suddenly gone a bit purple. And two... My dad's here. Three of my dads, to be specific. And uh, yes, this is one of the things that's rather fun about this area. And when I say fun, I mean kind of broken, which is... Uh, okay, let's start off with a fun fact that some of you may not be aware of, which is... Uh, when you say what your character is going to look like in Fallout 3, it also changes the appearance of James. His eye colour, his hair colour, his skin colour, all those change to better reflect whatever character you've set up. With the exception of Vault 106. Because in Vault 106 you see a hallucination of James. But it's always Caucasian James. Meaning if you set up a character where your James isn't Caucasian. And you come to Vault 106. You do have the rather trippy experience of coming into this room right here. And discovering three race swap versions of your own father. Just chilling out in this lab. Which is certainly a bit on the odd side. There is, however, if you just nip back in time for a second, one other really cool thing in this room that's really easy to miss because, yes, the purple filter, i.e. the hallucination, wears off almost immediately. But while it's active, there's one other thing you can do. And I missed this so many times. So just go into purple mode and this terminal here is now working. So your brain softworks version of me you know you want to, sit back and enjoy the ride, why worry, this place seems great, it's time we kick back, relax and forget about the desolate, hopeless, bleak and blasted wasteland outside, have we enjoyed a frosty new Coca-Cola yet today, well, we ought to fix that, marvellous, so yes, broken terminals, when you're in a purple mode, actually start working again, and you can read notes from your own brain. 
And if we just mosey on a little bit further, yes indeed. We're not actually alone in here. We've got some insane survivors. So, uh, unfortunately, they need to go down. They can't be reasoned with or anything. Though, um, yes, they're not wearing armor. They're using melee weapons. They are not that difficult to deal with. Though yes, the fact we're dealing with insane survivors who are wearing vault suits does raise some rather difficult questions about the Fallout 3 chronology, given, are we supposed to understand these are actual vault dwellers who went insane? Because if so, well it's 2277. That suggests the vault was running without this experiment being done for like 200 years. Or maybe it ran really well and these people are like the great great grandchildren of the people who were the original vault dwellers and this is the moment it happened to go all wrong, like 10, 20 years before you arrived. Now, I'll admit, you may notice, they all seem to have a, yes, slightly raidery haircuts in a way, suggesting these might be raiders who moved into the vault and went insane, because there's still gas in the air, which we know because, you know, it affects you as well. But yes, if so, why are they all wearing vault suits? But arguably, yes, the real solution is that Fallout 3's chronology did change a bit during development. At one point during development, Fallout 3 was going to be set much, much closer to the bombs falling, in the same way that Fallout 76 would go on to be. But uh, yes, as a result, certain areas don't actually make a huge amount of sense, given it's actually been 200 years since Bomb Day. So keep on keeping on, reach the living quarters proper, and yes, this is where we start getting uh, the victim side of the story in particular. Here's a lovely note right here, Scribbles. Scribbledy, bibbledy, hoddledy, who, wing wang, brick a bang, choo choo choo, upside up popsicle tastes like blue, ghosts in the hall go boo boo boo. Basically, the people here weren't doing so hot. But I guess on the plus side from their point of view, yes, the people who were dying horribly from psychological experimentation in Vault 92 appeared to be in a horrifying pain and were very keenly aware that they were losing their minds and couldn't do anything about it, which is truly horrifying. The people here just seem to, you know, have got really, really bloody happy and drunk and drugged up and whatever. So, you know what? It's probably better from their point of view than what happened in Vault 92. A nice hard lot will get us into the overseer's office. Magnificent and in just a second. Uh, yes, indeed. Purple once again. Naturally, because it's the overseer, we get to see our overseer from Vault 101. And um, funny old fact, by the way, you can attack these guys. It will make them go a hostile, but yes, indeed. If you kill them, they just disappear, naturally enough, because they were never here in the first place. So honestly, don't waste the ammo. The Overseer's terminal, meanwhile, needing Science 100 to crack open. Yes, indeed. Confirms the Overseer was lying earlier. It was not just some accident. Ventilation system has been checked and the required security and medical protocols have been initiated as per instruction in preparation for release of the control. Following systems have been brought online, presumably particular air ducts, and the following systems have been disconnected. So, bare minimum, he was running this experiment with the proper control group, etc. So, basically, again, much better experimentation than in Vault 92. In addition, there are security protocols, camera protocols, medical protocols, and mention of preliminary tests, suggesting, yes, there were probably much smaller scale experiments before he started pumping the gas into the wider vault area. Ah, uh, yes, and while we're passing by this area, yes. Fun little thing about Vault 106, which is uh, the game never actually specifies precisely, you know, what the gas is that's being pumped into this area. But there are some cut notes in the game's files that do provide a bit of an explanation. Like during multiple parts of this vault, you will find, yes, windows overlooking caves uh, that have got some weird bits and pieces growing in them. And in a couple of notes that for some reason didn't make it into the base game, but as I say, can still be found in the game's files, uh, they do specify they were paying a lot of attention to uh, some type of fungus that was growing nearby. So the reason this vault was built where it was and is doing the experiment that it was uh, is because they found a particular fungus and were testing it on the residents. So basically, yes, this is kind of the last of us vault in a way. And while I'm passing by, a beautiful science bobblehead too that gives me... 10% bonus damage to robots on this occasion. Lovely. And here we go, just behind this area, if we just kind of uh, sort of nip back in time in a way, because yes, during this hallucination, we're kind of seeing the vault as it once was, all lovely and neat. Do not forget to check out the terminal. So, uh, once again, a note to me. This place is great. I think it's time to accept the new and embrace this change. Relax. So, okay, my brain is just super into being drugged, apparently. 
Come on, don't you like it better here? Breathe deep in the blue. Relax. Please read me. Seriously, this place has everything we need. Enjoy it while we're here. Fine, be that way. I have nothing more to say to you. We're through here. So basically, yes, me and my brain are now arguing with each other through a hallucinated terminal exchange, which is beautiful. And here we flipping go. We're also running into, wait a second. Yes, just there for a moment, we had ourselves some martyrs. Hang on, rewind the clock here. I'd like to get a closer look at those amantas if I could, because... Oh, no, they're... Okay, they're disappearing too fast for me to even get a vats on them, unfortunately. But, uh, yes, once again, funny old thing about this area, the amantas aren't actually the same amanta that I just ran into outside. They are very slightly different. The hairstyle is just a tiny bit off, suggesting, again, they might have been using, like, an earlier version of Amata that was changed in Vault 101, but then wasn't changed in the hallucination. This area is a bit on the weird sides. Ah, oh, here we go. More notes as well, too. Feel the love, man. Oh, man, I just had to get my thoughts on paper, man. Otherwise, the cat in my head forgets, man. The sky's as blue as it used to be. I'm so happy to be here. My roomies are flailing about in the love mist. I can't remember what I was doing before, but man, is it great here now. I never thought about it like this before, but the walls just need someone to love too, man. You see, seriously, these guys were having a much better time than they were over in Vault 92. Also, super cute touch. If you explore, yes, the whole dormitory area, there is a single bedroom that's locked. Average locked when you first get here. And inside that room, yes, indeed. Something's clearly being sprayed into the room. So, the isolated one room and sprayed the gas into it. So... Admittedly, this does raise the question, I'm not entirely sure how this vault actually went wrong. Like, clearly, the Overseer had a good experimental procedure going on, he'd done experiments that hadn't gone wrong previously, so there's no evidence in this vault for the exact moment he made a critical mistake that led to everyone going insane, security being overrun, etc, etc. One might reasonably assume, given the Overseer's terminal has only one entry and no results, that yes, basically, this was the day he decided to expand the experiment into a wider area, not just one isolated room. Possibly, this room in front of me was the test room, and that was when it immediately went wrong, but yes, there's no actual certain evidence one way or the other. Oh my flippy goodness, okay. Now this is incredible attention to detail. I've just stepped inside the science labs and, uh, you may notice through this window, uh, this room is upside down. Now, this was one of the things that was planned to be in this vault, but it never made it into the game, and it would appear that this mod uh, has restored it. Though, uh, unfortunately, yes, the purple vision is not showing up. So, uh, okay, well that's just bloody lovely. Well done, mods. Still, one final terminal is going to give us, yes, all the information we're going to be able to get, which is go into science and then loop back out to living quarters, getting you access to the otherwise completely inaccessible security office, getting me one master key and one security terminal. To vault security, today at 3.30pm, we are initiating control sequence 462A. We are unsure of the full effects of the gas release, so we request that anyone receiving this message head to their designated locations as noted on your C11 form. The assigned locations were chosen for the cover and safety they provide, so do not vacate them unless dire circumstances arise. Remember to handle anyone acting abnormally according to the guidelines provided, and most importantly, immediately call for medical assistance. We thank you for your assistance during this brief test, and assure you the control is non-lethal, and will be cleared from the air before 1600. The Overseer. So, yes, I guess we've got to assume that for some reason, this particular test was the one that went horribly wrong, maybe because it was a new gas, maybe it was too many people at the same time, we just don't know. Still, I believe we should be arriving at pretty much the end of this area right now, which is, yes, as we reach the very lowest level and clear out the last handful of survivors. Uh, yep, we're going purple right now. I think my character's just uh, slipped forward a tiny bit there. We now come under attack from the Tunnel Snakes. Marvellous. And just in case you're curious, yes, obviously, there's nothing to stop you bringing Butch along with you into this vault. He can see the same hallucinations as you, which makes no sense, but whatever, and will happily murder other Butch, and then make no comment on this situation whatsoever. Apparently, as far as he's concerned, it's just not worthy of notes. So, okay, crack out the shot 
gonna chase you guys back and there we go the hallucination comes to an end and there is one person remaining the survivor not an insane survivor no 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 a normal survivor though here we go one takes a certain amount of damage they will go invisible with a stealth boy but that's fine they were already very very wounded so down they flipping go lovely and as for what precisely the only not insane survivor was doing down at the bottom, well, it's kind of hard to tell, to be honest. There's, yes, like, a cave here, and uh, there's a mini nuke here. So generally people report this as, uh, oh, they were attempting to, like, you know, blow their way out. But, I mean, if they were, they really didn't make it very far, to be perfectly honest. Like, I feel like, you know, uh, they could have maybe done a, a bit more digging. Also, uh, if they were trying to escape, like, they could just go up through the vault. Maybe that would have made them go insane because there's no gas down here, but there's gas upstairs, except we know there is gas down here, because literally I was just affected by the gas that let me see the tunnel snake. So I'm not 100% sure why they're trying to like dig and or explode their way out. Like, especially as uh, they're really cooking far underground here. Well, whatever it was that happened down here previously and whatever's going on now, that's the end of it. With the survivor dead, there's nothing more waiting for you in this bit of the world. So uh, how about we mosey on back outside and go and pay a visit to the other vault I want to see today. And naturally, to get into Vault 87, we need to go through Lamplight, and uh, there is a very good reason for that. Let's just say uh, the front door is not exactly a happy, fun, friendly place to be. In particular, yes, there's a lot of cooking super mutants guarding it. That's the first problem. And even if you can work around all of that, yes, indeed. You may notice there's a lovely sign here suggesting... Annual dose limit for radiation may be reached in approximately 0.5 seconds, and... Uh, the sign's not kidding. This is actually, yes, not only the most radioactive area in this game, it's the most radioactive area in the entire Fallout franchise. No area, not the glowing sea, not anywhere, will kill you with radiation as fast as Vault 87's external door. So here we go as we get a bit uh, closer to the door. You may notice, yes, things are getting out of hand in a hurry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to spam a Radaway and Radex just to max out my Rad resistance to 85%. Put the gun away to run a bit further. And you know what? I think something might have been lost in translation here because in Fallout 3, oh, it is more radioactive than this in the base game. Something may have got lost in the conversion of uh, Fallout 3 into Fallout New Vegas. So uh, the test labs uh, requires a key. Yes, indeed, uh, you just can't open this door no matter what your lockpick, no matter anything. It's just not feasible. Though people, of course, did try by the looks of it. One scientist attempted to make it here and it didn't go well for her. But yes, in the Fallout 3 base game, the rads here are like at several thousand a second. So, uh oh, pretty sure my uh, rad away just uh, wore off there. I'm sure that's absolutely fine. But yeah, it would appear to have been significantly toned down in the conversion from Fallout 3 into Fallout New Vegas porting Fallout 3, which is what Tale of Two Wastelands is. So, okay, yes, basically, this is why you don't want to come here. One, very radioactive. And two, even if you do make it through, you can't actually get in. Instead, yes indeed, let's mosey on back to Lamplight and get our way in the back door, which is a whole lot bloody safer. Either I can just blast my way into Murder Pass, or we can just hack a computer in order to get in the back way. Definitely the latter. Let's just say, yes, Super Mutants, you're going to be wanting to avoid them at this point in the game, because they may or may not be Overlords, and Overlords are a cocking nightmare. So if you've already spoken to McCready about, yes, the various options, murder pass or the terminal, there's McCready up there. Obviously, next step is to track down Joseph. In general, yes, in the morning he can be found in the classrooms because he's the teacher. In the evenings, he tends to walk around the lower levels of the living area with his sister Penny. So, Joseph, tell me about the secret back door that doesn't work. Nuh-uh. Door works fine. Computer's broke. Well, maybe not broke, but it sure don't work right. I turned it off because it was just wasting power. And this sounds like good news to me, because if it's just a password issue, I am really good at cracking open computers. And here we go, now this here. This looks a lot more vaulty, beautiful. It's just a mosey on up in this direction. He gets that working straight away. Unfortunately, yes, no matter what lockpick can get you in, you've got to get the computer turned on first. Then it's just a matter of science 50. 
And with that done, into today's second vault we go. Immediately getting me a big old pile of XP, because I've officially made it to Vault 87, beginning the next mission, finding the Garden of Eden. Lovely. So give me a bit of sneak, maybe a handful of explosives, lovely, then maybe... You know what, I just want Bart to be a nice round number, it makes me feel better, damn it. Lovely, there we flipping go, no perk or anything, so on we flipping go. And straight away we run into, yes, the final piece of the puzzle that explains how lamplight came to be lamplights. Buried away at the very bottom of the vault we've got ourselves a, a toy car and a handful of drugs. And a terminal from one Peter Stevens. Now unfortunately, yes, some of this is corrupted so we don't get the full picture. However, some of it we do. I don't know what to do. My Jason, my boy, he's gone. My wife won't talk to me. She just sits in this godforsaken sublevel and stares out of the window at the rock wall as if looking across a sunlit meadow or a lazy summertime lake. Jason was my life. He was my joy, my meaning. Now all this work seems pointless. This was a mistake. Better we'd all die together outside than inside this permanent tomb. I'm scared. So okay, the reason he's, uh, yes, maybe got the toy next to him, his son died once they were already inside the vaults. And skip forward a bit and yes indeed it all starts coming together. Nothing is meaning to me anymore, every time I'm in the outer tunnels I swear I hear children laughing. The vault doctors say it's just my mind compensating for the loss of Jason, but I know I'm not crazy. They gave me pills, but pills are for crazy people. I refuse to take these pills, I am not crazy. Why bring up kids in a hellhole like this? Why? It's a pointless existence. So, yes indeed. He heard the children of Lamplight laughing, and everyone assumed he was going bananas. But he wasn't. He was genuinely hearing those children outside. And we know from the notes we can find in Lamplight that they actually knocked on the back door and asked to be let in. And he responded, no, you're dead, because he was not dealing well with the death of his son. And that's how Lamplight became Lamplight. This one person who was very much not doing very well. And next up on my to-do list today is basically, yes, blast my way past a really bloody large number of mutants. And uh, how easy that's going to be is largely a factor of uh, how many overlords are planning to spawn in. Which is, yes, another reason why everything super mutant related uh, you might wish to do at a lower level than this. Like rushing the super mutant stuff could definitely be a good idea so that you get it done before Overlord starts spawning in on a regular basis. Like, you know, there is a nice little sweet spot somewhere around level 10 where you can be really, really good at fighting, but for the most part, you're still just seeing brutes spawn in. I do rather enjoy, by the way, how, yes, in Vault 87, they really did go all bloody in. Like, you know, gore bags hanging from every available surface, just limbs scattered as far as the eye could see. It is just lovely that, yes, they went full on a horror wonderland for just one vault. Though, yes, as I say, to be honest, this early section of Vault 87 is not really that interesting, aside from a couple of terminals, though, uh, I can't deny, I'm rather impressed with myself for accidentally creating a corpse hammock. Because this here, are oh, Bethesda Physics, I love you. And speaking of which, downstairs from the atrium, here we flipping go. The engineering section. Because here we've got some really interesting bits and pieces, okay? It starts off nice and mundane, a slight issues, guy went up and fixed it, magnificent. But, as time goes on, yes, things start getting a bit more unusual. Entry 6. Issue EEP Chamber Failure. Fix notes. I was summoned to the overseer's office and met with Dr. Merrick, who heads up the experimentation section. He informed me that one of his devices, what he called an EEP chamber, was edited. It was a strange device, but I managed to edit it, which didn't fix the problem. I then tried edit it, which seemed to bring the device back online. I'm not sure what the device is for, but edit it. So yes indeed, someone's been going through the engineering terminal redacting sensitive information. And even better, the final service entry, issue, need help. This is the only place I could think of hiding this message. In the event anyone reads this, please try and get word back to Vault Tech headquarters that something is very wrong in the experimentation section. Something they keep referring to as the EEP. 
My wife Mercia was diagnosed by the medical section as having some form of disease they wouldn't identify. She's dead now, those sons of bitches won't even tell me why. From talking to people, I've discovered that many are dead or missing. Checking this with the medical record section gets me nowhere. This is getting out of hand. It's time to deal with this my way. They took my wife from me, now I'll take their lives away if I don't get some answers. I've hidden some extra help in my safe, Accessing this message will unlock it. If I don't come back, grab that stuff and save yourself. And inside the safe with a handful of ammunition, we have got grenades and we have got a scoped magnum. So, yes indeed, just keep that in mind there. Chap here, his wife went missing, his wife by the name of Mercia, and he had a giant pile of guns and explosives and voice that he was willing to consider using them to get some revenge. So what we want to do is cross-reference that information with another terminal down the line. Speaking of which, literally just around the corner, we've got here the medical records. To all medical record staff, any vault member marked as deceased by the special EEP section will be tagged and coded in the computer as an unexplained or undefined death. This comes directly from the overseer of this vault, who will be personally inspecting your reports to make sure they are accurate. Please refrain from sending inquiries or clarification requests to this office or the EEP chief physician. Please print out and give next of kin form DV900L if they have questions. So okay, basically we now know how anyone who died in the experimentations in Vault 87 will be marked inside the medical records. And speaking of which, here we go, the coding system. So, various natural deaths, mag flipping, nificent, and then accidental deaths. And in particular, hang on, just keep going on here. There we go. Other, undefined or unexplained. UD000. And as soon as we've got that information, we can start to see the scale of this experimentation. So, yes indeed, 93 total deceased, only 4 natural causes. 2, accidental, 87, unexplained or undefined, which we now know means, uh, yes, they were mutated by the FEV. But here's the funny old thing if we go through that entire list. There is only one person by the name of Mercia present, and her code is not UD000. Her code is N009 which you can cross-reference back to the glossary to confirm she did not die of the experimentation. She died of cancer. As for why they didn't just tell her partner in engineering that, who knows? Maybe they were swimming in so many corpses, they simply were too busy to do so. Maybe the person whose responsibility was informing people about the death of other vault dwellers had just got so used to covering it up that they didn't realise for once somebody had actually died of natural causes. Which does lead to the misunderstanding we found a second ago on the engineering terminal. This guy's girlfriend went missing and died and he naturally assumed having asked around and realised yes large numbers of people were disappearing and dying of mysterious causes that she was part of that number. But if she was they would have flanked her as unknown or undefined like everyone else. It's not like they weren't using that all the time. They absolutely were. She actually wasn't experimented on at all. But due to that miscommunication, naturally, he came to the assumption that she must have been. So as a result of that, I'll take their lives away if I don't get some answers. And uh, yes, indeed, we were just mentioning he had a pile of guns and explosives. Because here's the funny old thing about Vault 87, which is uh, we don't actually know at what point things went wrong. In the sense that the experiments got out of hand and the super mutants took over. After all, we know for a fact they were running the experiment successfully for some time, including of course, yes, here we go, the multiple stasis labs that were mentioned back in the Citadel. So they had purpose-built stasis labs in order to perform the experimentation in a safe way. Which leads me to the possible conclusion, and I can't prove this, but I personally do believe it, that the reason Vault 7 went dark, why the super mutants were able to escape and take over, was probably because of that engineer. He launched his revenge attack on the scientist who he thought had killed his girlfriend and, uh, as a result of that, there was some form of a FEV leak. The super mutants were no longer contained to their stasis chambers because, well, he didn't know about the super mutants. He knew people were dying en masse, but he didn't know about any of the rest of it. So he rocks up in the test labs and starts firing his gun, tossing his grenades, etc, etc. Kills some scientists, breaks their equipment, thinks he's done a good job and nips back down to engineering. But um, yes, what he didn't realise was uh, 
he's kind of just doomed the entire capital wastelands. Again, I can't prove this, there's no actual evidence to support this theory directly, but I'd say it's the best we've got based on what's on the engineering terminal. Which I do also like because it does add an extra layer of tragedy to the story of the super mutants and Vault 87 that, in the end, the reason why there is a giant super mutant plague that has caused so much death and destruction across the DC wasteland is, at some point someone forgot to let this guy know that his girlfriend had passed away of cancer, and as a result of that, yes, things spiralled out of control and led to a gigantic super mutant infestation across the entirety of the DC area. And speaking of the test chambers, yes indeed, we can verify just by checking with their terminals, uh, the FEVs run out. This of course is what the super mutants are trying to achieve across all of Fallout 3. Originally, they just had to go out, kidnap some random people, shove them in the chambers, push the button, FEV gets sprayed in, boom, they become super mutants, magnificent. But um, that stopped working at some point in recent history. They ran out of the green stuff, as they refer to it if you overhear them talking about it. That's why you find super mutants trying to break into vaults, hospitals, anything that looks like it might be vaulty, like say the Museum of Technology, it's because they're after more FEV. So in which case, let's just mosey on in the right direction because, uh, yes indeed, I suspect we're about to run into a lovely new friend. You, over there, please, uh, come speak to me. I'm in the room to your left. Oh, use the intercom next to the window. Because yes indeed, many super mutants become violent monsters, but a small number retain their higher intelligence, which is true for good old folks here. Though fun fact, if you check the Chief Physician's terminal, it is a bit hard to figure out whether we're supposed to be understanding that this batch of FEV in Fallout 3 is generating different results to the FEV that we see in Fallout 1 in particular. Specifically in terms of, yes, what percentage of super mutants come out as mindless brutes versus how many come out extremely intelligent. Because uh, that ratio in Fallout 1 is a bit hard to figure out. It's not really clear, like, what percentage you typically expect to retain their intelligence. It feels like it might be a fair bit lower in Fallout 3, given that there are literally only two intelligent super mutants, Uncle Leo, who you can run into in a random event, but you might well not do so, and Forks, who's been locked away just round the corner. So, yes, bit hard to figure out, but I'm gonna work under the assumption this was just a worse batch of FEV. Though thinking about it, yes, it probably didn't help that the vast majority of super mutants created in Fallout 3 were created by other super mutants dumping a human in a room and pushing the spray button. Possibly, yes, scientists would have been able to get better results in the long run. It can't be. Either you are quite real. I am going quite mad. Could you actually be a pure human? And yes, I am indeed good, sir. It's lovely to meet you. Forgive me. Uh, I'm not used to pleasantries. I'm more used to grunts and being struck about by the others. My name's Fox. I've lived in this cage all my life. And there we go. With sufficient intelligence, we can point out the irony of the situation. Yes. Indeed, it is ironic. Forgive my astonishment, but I hadn't expect to meet someone with such a learned outlook of these things. It is a pleasant change. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. It was only a matter of time before someone like you showed up for the gek. And yes, indeed, buddy. I'm after the Genki you want to get out of here. Let's me and you be friends. Indeed. Your powers of deduction are quite impressive. I do indeed know where it is and how to get it. The device is surrounded by a lethal field of radiation. Oh, 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 lethal to humans, that is. Without insulting your intelligence, I think you can see where this is going. So, next up, we've got to get this guy out, and though there is actually a terminal right here next to him, unfortunately something's wrong with the door, so we can't just unlock it that way. And it also can't be lockpicked either. 
unfortunately, we've got other options, which is, yes, just at the end of the hallway, right over here. What we can do is basically pretend as a fire, which will cause every room to open up. But some of the rooms do have, you know, fairly nasty monsters in them. We don't want that to happen. Though, funny old thing, you may notice in, yes, one of the rooms here, room number 03, we've got ourselves a person just chilling out, running around in circles. If I crack into, yes, this terminal right here, in order to open the door, I can let him out. If I do, he will immediately attack me. If I crack open the door in any way using, yes, the fire terminal, he will do the same. However, if you crack open his door with lock picking, he doesn't go hostile. He just starts running around in a circle, and you get to have a nice chat to sit. No, it's all over me. I can feel it. Fading my mind. So basically, yes, um, Sid's not doing so hot. Can't you see? They're all dead. It's all my fault. And probably, yes, though you can't get an entirely coherent narrative out of him, it does feel like potentially, yes, he's been driven insane by guilt. And given over in a yes, room number one, we've got ourselves a couple of corpses just chilling out in there. One might reasonably assume he was part of the same team. And yes, watching all his friends die while he survived, that's what's made him go a bit bananas. Still, what we really want to do is just leave this console alone for now. Instead, go over to this terminal at the rear. Because using that, I can blow each individual door. So here we go, door number five, magnificent. That's going to get Fox out without letting out anyone else. So basically, yeah, best of both worlds for only Science 50. Finally, freedom! True freedom! <laughs> I cannot thank you enough for this gift. You have no idea how long I've pictured this moment in my mind. And it feels far better than I'd imagined. Now, for my part of the bargain, follow me. He's no kidding, by the way. Like, a Fox, when he's your companion, is an absolute unstoppable badass. But um, during this section, he's made just, yeah, even more vicious than he will be later in the game. Meaning, he's basically an unstoppable Superman and can deal with basically anything that's in front of him all by himself. So, here we go. Forks just starts running forward and... Okay, admittedly, um, there is an Overlord. Okay, that could be the one thing that... That's two Overlords, actually. Okay, you know what? Never mind. Uh, scratch that. Forks could be in a little bit of trouble, actually. So, I'm gonna help him out by just knocking all these guys down. So, that's fine. That's all absolutely fine. Just keep one of them down. Forks is honestly, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, probably capable of dealing with this. So, let's just, uh, keep knocking you down a... Bloody dear, oh flipping dear. Right, Overlord. Bloody ridiculous bastards. No, no, no. No weapons for any of you, please. There we go. Overlords go down and uh, Fox has still got all that health. Just, yeah, if I just uh, very quickly line up a headshot on this guy. Yeah, the amount of health he's got is ridiculous. That wouldn't even make a dent. So, step the next, we've just got to clear out the super mutants. And if we just, uh, yes, check out this door right here... We're not going to be doing anything with that door just this second, but um, remember it's there for later. So what's supposed to happen at this point is a fox goes and grabs you the gank because yes, it is a very much held in an extremely radioactive room. He gives it back to you. Everybody gets what they want. Hooray. But um, okay, let's just say I'm now planning to continue my tendency to do things in the dumbest way possible. Okay, you stay here. Beyond this door, the hallways and chambers are flooded with radiation. I'll get the case and bring it right back. Keep your eyes open. Any of my lesser-minded brethren are bound to stumble across us. Oh no, 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 no. How about we both go in? After all, that way if one of us fails, the other can still grab it. And uh, yes, indeed, as you can tell there, it is a bit on the radioactive side. Uh, but that's all fine. If I just spam a large enough amount of rat away, I can keep on top of this. I'm amazed by your robot. The gap must be quite valuable. So there we go. Fox is actually even a bit impressed by me. So just uh, wait for this to crack open. And uh, in just a second, we're just about keeping on top of this. We can interact with the gank. 
Want to say it's wrapped with it? Yes, we've got options. We could pick it up and take it with me. Mad cognificent. Or instead, we can activate it. The gate will collapse all matter within its given radius and recombine it to form a living, breathing, fertile virgin landscape and allow life to begin anew. Are you certain you want to do this? Once again, yes. In which case, yes. Basically, you die and mysteriously forks doesn't. Well done, forks. And then there is a gigantic roar. And as a result of that, one assumes that, yes, basically, the vault and possibly several miles of land around it have been nuked and then reformed into a lush, perfect wonderland. Which honestly just raises further questions as to, seriously, how the hell is the Gek supposed to work? Like, is it just a box containing useful advice and some seeds and whatnot? Or is it a gigantic nuclear bomb that spreads magic and countryside? Because the games are wildly inconsistent as to precisely what a Gek is and how it works. But the Fallout 3 Gek, you can literally push a button and it just goes... Bang! I've created a lush countryside for you. But, um, yes, that's definitely not what the get from Vault 15 or Vault City did. Absolutely cocking not. So, God only knows what gets are supposed to do in Fallout. Instead, just do the same thing again. Lovely. There are some nice spots that are not so radioactive. Uh, crack open all of this too. We are well under control for the time being. And as soon as Gek Containment opens up, I'll be having that. Thank you. So there we go. Didn't need you at all, folks. Basically, screw you, you stupid loser. Deciding to retrieve the device yourself was foolish when I was at your disposal, but... Uh, so be it. Well, I'm afraid this is where you and I part company. I'll find my way out of this place. Don't worry. Maybe we'll meet again somewhere in the wasteland. Yes, indeed, folks. Maybe, in fact, we'll meet very soon indeed. So, uh, yes, if you speak to him when you're inside the radiation, he seems to admire your bravado. But um, the moment you come out of it, all of a sudden, he thinks you were just being a bit of an idiot. And uh, to be honest, yes, I was. But I do just enjoy going in and pushing the turn on the gate button. It's just too funny not to do. And just indeed, given how leaving Vault H7 might just might trigger a big plot thing to happen, how about we call it apart there and pick up whatever might be about to happen next week? Because, uh, yes indeed, we might just be paying a visit to the Enclave base, and uh, that does open up a few other bits and pieces around the wasteland. So join me next week as we say hello to some old enemies, uh, and also, as I say, just dig into a couple of other secrets buried across the wasteland. So, uh, hopefully, you're looking forward uh, to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.